Well, the idea came from a combination of, of, of places. It's really, in a way, the culmination of, of many, many years' work. The, um, my, I have a cousin who, who went very young to Syria to learn Arabic in about 2010. And he was there for a year or so. And then, of course, the war broke out. And all his friends were, you know, they joined the opposition or they had to flee into exile. And so he came back to London full of kind of righteous indignation. And he enthused me and my husband and co-producer William Sterling, who's here as well. I rang Oxfam up, who I do a lot of work with journalistically over the years. I said, do you have any similar projects that we could do with you? And she said, oh, I wish you could think of something for our Syrian refugees. Now, Willie and I are both classicists. We studied ancient Greek at university. So we both remembered the Trojan women. And the Trojan women is a play about refugees. It's set at the fall of Troy. All the men are dead. And the women are waiting in the Greek camps to find out their fate. And Euripides wrote it as an anti-war protest against his own state, Athens, which had conquered the neutral island of Milos, killed all the men, and sold the women and children to slavery. And he wrote it two and a half thousand years ago. Now, I remember in the summer of 1992, when I first went to Bosnia, which I did straight from university, I spent all that summer talking to refugees. And then that autumn, I was listening in my kitchen in Kiev, where I was living as a foreign correspondent then, at age 26. Um, I listened to the Trojan women on the radio, on the BBC World Service. And suddenly, I was just listening to the same stories all over again. Nothing had changed. It was murder, rape, exile, loss, death. And I just thought, nothing changes in war, only the weapons change. Everything else is eternal. And so, when they asked us to do something, this was the obvious play for us to choose. So it occurred to me that if we were doing Euripides Trojan Women with Syrian refugees, that was also something that was very, very newsworthy. And I'm a journalist, I've been a journalist for years, so I know that Syrian refugee has terrible life, that is not news. Syrian refugee puts on a Greek tragedy. That really is news. That you can get articles about on, you can get it on CNN, you get it on BBC, you get it on Al Jazeera. And what, back then, it's hard to remember this now, but back then the Syrian refugee crisis was very, very underreported. Essentially it was completely ignored. Nobody cared. And it was this appalling humanitarian crisis and the world had just turned its back on it. So I thought, well, if we do this drama project with the Syrian women, well, we didn't know it was going to be only women then. If we do this project with the Syrian, then we should also use it as a means to make the world sit up and take notice about what's happening. And from that, that's why we evolved the various different strands of it. We thought, if we do it as a play, it's theirs, and they can do what they like with it afterwards. Um, and then we thought, well, we should make a documentary about doing this as well, because if you're trying to get a message out, yes, you can get a few news stories out about it. Yes, if you do a play, you can get some people to watch it. But in the end, your, the news stories are, okay, they live online, but they don't have an enormous impact. The, every time you can ratchet up the impact, you should. With the play, you're limited to the number of people who actually come to the theatre. But if you make a documentary about doing it, that can be seen by millions of people, millions and millions of people. And indeed, this documentary has been seen by millions and millions of people. Um, but also, to a certain extent, it hedged the project because documentaries thrive on disaster. And it was quite an ambitious project. And I had this voice, um, imagine this voice in my head saying, William has never directed a play before and does not speak Arabic. Uh, in fact, we actually got, it got so much ground to the project that we sacked ourselves and hired a very, very grand Syrian director to do it, who was an expert in community theatre. So, and then we sacked ourselves from directing the documentary as well and hired a sort of quite grand <laughs> British uh, Syrian Palestinian director to direct the documentary. So um, at every level, we were sort of removed ourselves from it as the project grew and grew and people with more experience, we, we hired them. So the documentary was about increasing the um, power to communicate what was happening with Syrian refugees. We worked with uh, 60 women who originally turned up for the project uh, to uh, be part of it. None of them had ever acted before. I think only two had ever been to a theatre before. And uh, when they arrived, they were, um, they were very nervous. And they had, one has to remember that these people weren't living in camps, they were living in the poorer parts of Amman, mostly in basement flats, mostly very, very strapped for money. But they had to, husbands and themselves had to work illegally to be able to afford their rent and food, etc. 
Um, and because they were in particular parts of Oman, the sort of working class Jordanians have had real problems with the Syrians because they say they're stealing our jobs and they, you know, they work illegally. And it's a, so they're not always on friendly terms with their neighbors, very isolated. And because they uh, have uh, high levels of PTSD and depression, they don't like to go out, they don't, you know, they don't interact, they had no friends. They arrived clutching their smallest children in their handbags, which is pretty much what they walked out of Syria with. And um, the first part of the process was to go through their own stories of what had happened to them, in which they had to do in acted out scenarios, they had to do it in, on big sheets of paper describing their journeys. Um, and we had a psychiatrist on hand to help them when it got too much. But what they discovered is that all these other women had similar stories to them and they became to, began to coalesce into a group and a community. The reason for doing this was not just a therapeutic thing, because we also wanted to put their stories into the play. And it was very important for us that in the play, in this Arabic version, that it wasn't the Greek spears toppled the tower of my husband's house. It was the regime's text, sort of rebels, shells destroyed my house next to the police station whatever, it's all my husband's business. And um, through this sort of doing lots of actors exercises, etc., we had, um, they began to become much more um, confident. And after three weeks of this workshop process, we then asked um, who wants to be, who wants to carry on to do, to be on stage, to do the play. And 25 of them wanted to do that. Others couldn't do that. They had problems. The ones who did want to do that, but the regime had some of their members in jail or their husbands said it's too risky. We had people at home. A lot of them wore the niqab during the performance who didn't necessarily wear it uh, daily. They produced this magnificent uh, performance. And they've remained this community ever since and have helped each other. When they came out, the sort of, uh, Lena Attal, who was the woman who ran the theatre, said, you do not realise what you've done for these women. So they're completely different people from when they came here. And when I spoke to a psychiatrist, he said, this sort of group therapy is absolutely ideal for the people who really can't handle what's happened to them. There are lots of people who can, you know, once they've got to safety, you know, they're, they're okay. And there's probably about 10% of them who really need one-to-one -one clinical help they're never going to get. But for these people, the 20% of, of refugees who really have to process through their minds what, what's gone on, this was ideal. And it certainly helped them to become much more confident, to be able to go out, to be able to deal with the world. And we have, uh, for the last two years since then, been doing various projects using some or all of them. Um, we did a radio opera, a soap opera, which some of the women were involved in. And then last year, their children were all involved in uh, Oliver in Arabic, which we did, uh, which was the debut of uh, the musical in Arabic. Um, and we have since done some more music and drama workshops for their children. Uh, the idea eventually we'll be able to possibly get someone to fund us to um, keep, keep, keep this as a sustainable project. The point of the documentary is to humanise the Syrian refugee crisis so that out there in the world, people are like, oh my God, all these people, they're coming to our country, and you, you can't individualise them at all, they're just sort of a mass. But the moment you actually pull them out and stop talking to them, they're people with the same hopes and aspirations as us. You've got to open people's minds. People are receptive to a story which is taken down to a very basic level of humanity, domestic level of humanity. And this is what I hope we did with the women who put their domestic stories, their work stories, into the actual play. It shows, it allows people to think, this is just a woman. This is just someone like me or my wife or my daughter living a normal life in a street in a normal city. And this is what happens to them.